Okay, Cleveland Browns being linked to a wide receiver. That's one of the big things that the Browns need is a wide receiver. And so this one is interesting because I think it I think it works. And let me walk through this and let me know in the comments, Cleveland Browns fans. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, we make videos for teams that don't get the love nationally like they should. And Cleveland's one of those teams, and we're Detroit Lions fans. And so we uh, we just always like the Browns. Browns and Lions, they just get each other. So here it is. Mike Williams from the Chargers. Now, his, this is why it's interesting. He's 29. He's going to be 30 at the start of the year. Had an ACL tear last year. So he's coming off an ACL. He's older. But in his seven-year career, he's had two 1,000-yard-plus game plus seasons. He's been a pro bowler. He's a good, productive player. Now, he's a number two option aside from Amari Cooper. So here's why this is interesting. An NFL analyst, Quincy Carrier, said that he likes this because Mike Williams, we've seen him produce. And the Browns are at a point to where they're not trying to develop a talent to be another wide receiver for them. They just need somebody to step in and produce right away. And when that's the case, you want to go find somebody who can produce because they've done it before. So he'll likely hit the market in March. He's due for a lot of money that the Chargers probably aren't going to do. But here's the deal. The team can open up approximately $33 million by pushing some of Deshaun Watson's $64 million cap hit down the line in form of dead money, which they have to do. $64 million cap hits is too much. And then they can extend Amari Cooper as well, and that'll free up more money because right now he has a $24 million cap hit for next season. So if the Browns, they might not have to do any of that because Williams has a $32 million cap hit in L.A., but if he's released then he's wide open and this is where you can get him for a one-year deal and this is what the lions have done now these last four three off seasons they just look for guys to give one-year deals a one-year deal and that's basically what most of these contracts are anyway in the nfl because it's like a three-year 30 million dollar deal really it's a one-year deal and then maybe we'll extend you or you know th then we can cut you at any time after the first year. It doesn't cost us, you know, so it's all these are one year deals mostly. So carrier says he has, I think $30 million cap hit. You're not going to want to go up against that. The chargers aren't. And I think he's turning close to 30 or something like that. So yeah, it's going to move on from him. So he's going to get cut. So it's like, all right, Mike Williams has his connection to Deshaun Watson in, in college at Clemson. So the Browns, and we've talked about this plenty, they have, and we'll go back to that in just a second, but they have the defense, the quarterback, new offensive coordinator, new running backs coach and Deuce Staley, new defense, or excuse me, defense is, is in place, but offense, you just kind of look along the line and it's like, all right, offensive line's pretty good. Running backs, we'll, we'll see what they want to do there, but need some juice at wide receiver in Joku's still playing well he's getting older but still is a good player that really showed out last year um towards the end of the year as well so if you are a browns fan you got to go find a wide receiver and we looked and you'll draft one as well but you just don't have time like that's the hard part it's not win now mode, but it almost feels like it a little bit just because all right we're paying you Deshaun Watson a lot of money defense miles garrett we've got some blue chippers on defense that we want to take advantage of jim schwartz everything's in place we need some wide receivers and we need them fast so let me know your thoughts in the comments on that one and then we'll look at as you look at who the browns could possibly draft it's pretty interesting because there is there's just wide receivers galore out there in this year's draft let me pull that up real quick first pick is 54 you got Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, 6'3", 227. Like, let's go. But look at all around him. You've got Xavier Worthy. Um, if you go up to the first part of the second round, Mitchell McConkey out of Georgia. Go past it a little bit. Go into the third round. Roman Wilson out of Michigan here at 73. Point is... There's wide receivers everywhere. Who's going to find 
that Amon Ross St. Brown type of wide receiver in the third, fourth round? Like that's the question because they're everywhere. Roman Wilson is the perfect example. Being here in Michigan, watching him six foot, I mean, he's barely six foot. He's not 192. He's got to be like 5'11", 180, but he's open and he catches the ball and it's just constantly open. So it's like, again, I, I'm not a draft NFL draft scout, but I watched that and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know. Is he going to work in the NFL? Part of me is like, no way. But, but my point is there are guys there. So I know you don't have a first round pick, but you start looking around second, third, fourth, the way it, it's going to pan out. And it's like, yeah, this could work. We we could get a wide receiver in the third round, fourth round, get a top end guy and kind of put it all together. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comments on this one. And we'll see all of you on the next one.